Hey guys, welcome to another Reaper blog tutorial. Today we're looking at MIDI note name maps and how we can set them up inside Reaper. First of all, let's just make a new track and insert a uh, MIDI file and double click. And we open up the piano roll. So on your left side is the rotated view of the piano. We click on the note. And if we have a synthesizer connected, we hear that note. And the only notes here that are labeled are the C's. There are different views for the MIDI editor. There's also a note name view. So view and named notes. And now it's just a list. And because there are no names for these notes here, it's just the number, the note number. If we want to name these notes, it's really simple. You just double right click. And as far as I know, this is the only place you double right click. Uh, pretty much anywhere in the universe, but uh, definitely inside Reaper. This is the only place you double right click. So we double right click and now there's a text entry box. And in here we can say that this is the kick. Go to the next one. And this is the snare. And skip one and this is a hi-hat. I know these numbers are actually wrong, but it's just for an example of how easy it is to actually enter those note names. So now if we make another MIDI item on the track, we still have those note names there. If we make a new track and go here, different track, different MIDI editor settings. All right, so going back to the first track, and if we want to save these, right click in an empty area of the MIDI editor. Uh, I like to do it right underneath the notification area here. And I'm going to File, Note Names, and we can save note names to file. If, if this is a layout that we use um, and we're sure it's correct and everything, then we can save it to it a note name file. And it will save everything we put in there as a new file. And you would put it into your MIDI note names folder. I already have a few here that I've saved and I'll show you those next. So I'm gonna unload this. I insert a track from my template. So I'm gonna go to my instruments folder and I'm going to use my Easy Drummer Modern Kit template. Now, if I put in a MIDI item here, double click, it comes up as just a blank uh, layout. There's no note names automatically entered or anything like that. So this time we're going to load. Right click, file, note names, load note names from file. If this is your first time loading the file, you're going to have to go to choose file. But because I've loaded these before, I have it in this list already. And there is my uh, MIDI layout already set up. And you see this in the um, either the named note view or in the piano roll view. I find it a little bit cluttered to see it like that. So I do like the um, named notes view. I also have some uh, custom actions set up to optimize my view for working with drums. That's this drum edit mode button. I'm pretty sure I have a video on that. If I do, then I'll have a link in the description. So that takes out all of the, the unnamed and unused notes from the view, and it's just the named and used notes here. It also changes the um, from rectangles to diamonds. So there's how you load a note name file. And let's get rid of this plugin. I'll show you one more plugin that uh, does it automatically, which is pretty neat. If you have F Expansion Geist 2, you can drop that in. Once again, insert a new MIDI item, double click here, and you can see that it's actually filled it in automatically. The track gets the relevant information from the plugin itself, and that is a huge time saver. I wish all plugins were like that, but they're not, unfortunately. So we have 24 patterns, we have um, up to 64 pads, and then there's some other things like repeat and erase that we can program in uh, if we're working exclusively in Reaper's MIDI editor instead of Geist's own sequencer. I'm going to load in a drum hit. Um, so pad one is now this. Let's open up this again. So I've double clicked a second time on the MIDI item and the note name is now named based on what's inside of Geist. That's awesome. 
As far as I know, that only works for the first engine inside Geist, uh, but still, it's pretty helpful. Okay, so one final thing I wanted to show you is inside of uh, the MIDI note name folder. So let's just look at what's actually involved in making a MIDI note file. I'm going to open up the Easy Drummer 2 modern note names file. This file is included with my subscriber downloads pack. This and track templates and pr plugin presets and all kinds of things uh, that you might like are available there for free. I'm only asking for your email address to occasionally email you about what's new and offer you more free stuff. Anyways, this is the contents of a note name file. One thing that's very important when you're making one of these is to not open it up in text edit, but to use a good plain text editor that's made for um, that's made for programming or code. And I use Text Wrangler. I think the one you should use for Windows is Notepad Plus. And why that is important is that sometimes you get uh, when you're copying and pasting from the plugins instruction manual uh, out of a PDF, you'll get all kinds of weird things, and it will look right inside of text edit. But when you bring it into Reaper, it doesn't know what to do with it because there's hidden special characters inside that file and the, your text editor is not showing you. I ran into that yesterday morning and it was pretty frustrating. So what there is in this, it's incredibly simple. You have the MIDI note number, which let's go back to Reaper, is these numbers on the left-hand side, one number per key, per pitch. And then it's the name of the note with a space between. Um, and then you go to the next line. It's as simple as that. So that's it. Just to recap, we've talked about how to manually name notes in the MIDI editor, how to save that as a note name file, how to load in a note name file. We've looked at a plugin that automatically generates a note name um, map that Reaper can read. And we've looked at creating one from scratch outside of Reaper and the potential things that could go wrong whilst doing that. That's it. Hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Thanks so much for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter. If you found this helpful, please consider being a patron at patreon.com slash the Reaper blog and visit reaperblog.net for a lot more tutorials.